P. Yeshev. The Little. Humpbacked Horse. R. Yeshev. Illustrated by N. M. Cockigan. Progress Publishers. Moscow. Translated from the Russian by Louis Zelikov. Designed by Iri Kapilov. First printing 1957. Second printing 1971. Third printing 1976. Fourth printing 1980. Printed in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Part 1. Now the telling of the tale begins. JL asked the woods and mountain steep. Past the rolling waters deep. You will find a hamlet pleasant. Where once dwelt an aged peasant. Of his sons and he had three. Th. Eldest sharp was as could be. Second was nor dull nor bright. But the third a fool all right. Now, these brothers planted wheat. Brought it to the royal seat. By which token you may know. That they hadn't far to go. There they sold their golden grain. Counted carefully their gain. And, with well-filled money bags. Home again would turn their nags. But, upon an evil day. Dire misfortune came their way. Someone, twixt the dark and dawn. Took to trampling down their corn. Never had such grief before. Come to visit at their door. Day and night they sat and thought. How the villain could be caught. Till at last it dawned upon them. That the way to solve the problem. And to save their crops from harm. Was, each night to guard their farm. As the day drew near its close. Up the eldest brother rose. And, with pitchfork, axe in hand. Started out his watch to stand. Dark and stormy was the night. He was overcome with fright. And, of all his wits deprived. In the nearest haystack dived. Slowly night gave way to day. Our brave watchman left his hay. And, with water from the well. Soused himself then, with a yell. Pounded on the cottage do dot r. And you should have heard him roar. Hey, you sleepy owls, cried he. Open up the door it's me. I am soaked right to the skin. Hurry, there, and let me in. Quickly they the door unbarred. Letting in their scent regard. Then they started questioning. Had he noticed anything? First, in prayer he bent his head. Cleared his throat, and then he said. After bowing left and right. Why I never slept all night. And I really wonder whether. There was ever fouler weather. Cats and dogs it poured, no joking. Feel my shirt, it's simply soaking. Oh, it was an awful night. But, then, everything's all right. Father praised his son with pleasure. Said, Dunalo, you're a treasure. You have served me well, my son. I can only say, well done. You have proved that you're a man. And have not disgraced me, Dan. As next day drew near its close. Up the second brother rose. And, with pitchfork, axe in hand. Also went his watch to stand. Such a fearful frost set in. That he shivered in his skin. Teeth a chat ring in his head. Freezing, from his post he fled. All night long, bereft of sense. He walked round his neighbor's fence. What a dreadful night he passed. But the morning came at last. Found him on the porch once more. Pounding on the cottage door. Hey, you sleepy owls, yelled he. Let your brother in it's me. I am frozen, frozen quite. It was dreadful cold last night. Quickly they the door unbarred. Letting in their sentry guard. Then they started questioning. Had he noticed anything? First, in prayer he bent his head. Through his teeth, he slowly said. After bowing left and right. 
Why, I never slept all night. And I really wonder whether there was ever colder weather. It was cold, I'd have you know. I kept running to and fro. Wasn't it a chilly night? But, then, everything's all right. And his father said with pleasure. You, Gavrilo, are a treasure. Evening once again drew near. Now the third should don his gear. But he never turned a hair. Sitting on the oven there. Singing with his foolish might. Oh, you eyes, as black as night. Then to coax and beg Ivan. Both the elder sons began. Bade him go and guard the grain. They grew hoarse but all in vain. Father finally said, Here. You just listen, Vonya dear. Go on watch, and if you do. This is what I'll do for you. I shall give you beans and peas. And some pictures, if you please. At these words, Ivan climbed down. Donned his coat of russet brown. Pocketed a lump of bread. And on Centrigo he sped. Night fell and the white moon rose. On his beat Ivan now goes. Looking sharply all around. Then he sits upon the ground. Munching slowly at his bread. Counts the bright stars overhead. Suddenly, a neigh resounded. To his feet our sentry bounded. Peering round with shaded eyes. In the field a mare he spies. Now, this mare, I'd have you know. Whiter was than whitest snow. Silken manair in ringlet streaming. To the ground, all golden gleaming. Oh, ho ho so this is it. You're the rogue but wait a bit. I don't like such nasty jokes. Played on honest farming folks. Trifling never was my line. And I'll jump upon your spine. Nasty little plague, said he. And, approaching stealthily. Seized her tail as in a vice. Mounted on her in a trice. Landed on her with a smack. Back to front and front to back. But the mare, whose blood was hot. Started bucking on the spot. Eyes ablaze with angry glow. Like an arrow from its bow. Over hills and valleys sped. Over streams and gullies fled. On her haunches rearing, prancing. Neath the forest branches dancing. All her wiles and strength in vain. Plying, to be free again. But she found her match at last. To her tail Ivan stuck fast. Finally, she said to him. Spent, and trembling in each limb. Since you sat me, I confess. I am yours now to possess. Find a place for me to rest. Care for me as you know best. But remember this my warning. That for three days, every morning. You must let me out to graze. At the end of these three days. Two such handsome steeds I'll bear. As have ne'er been seen, I swear. And a third I promise you. Only twelve hands high, with two. Little humps upon his back. Ears a yard long. Ice coal black. If you wish, why, sell the two. But, Ivan, whate'er you do. Part not with the little steed. Though you be in direst need. Nor for gold, nor silken raiment. Nor for lucky charm in payment. Faithful friend to you he'll be. Where carrot you go, on land or sea. He'll find shade from summer's heat. Keep you warm in snow and sleet. Find your food in time of need. Quench your thirst with cooling mead. Afterwards, you'll set me free. Let me roam at liberty. Now, Ivan thought this all right. Found her shelter for the night. In an empty shepherd's shack. O'er its door he hung a sack. Then he homeward made his way. With the early light of day. Singing merrily, hey ho. Vonya would a wooing go. See him near his home once more. Knocking at the cottage door. Calling out with might and main. 
till the rafters rang again. You'd have sworn, to hear him shout, that a fire had broken out. Up his brothers from their beds, jumped in fright, and scratched their heads. Stammering, who knocks so loud? Me, the fool, came answer proud. So they opened up the door, let him in, and roundly swore. At Ivan how did he dare? Give his brothers such a scare? But Ivan, with heedless air, climbed up on the oven, where, lying down in all his clothes, he related, at repose, his adventures while, amazed, open-mouthed, his hearers gazed. Well, I didn't sleep all night, counting all the stars so bright. Possibly, the moon was there, though I really wouldn't swear. Satan suddenly appeared, bristling whiskers, bushy beard, cat-like face and saucer eyes. I stared on in stark surprise, as that devil, with his tail, wit the wheat as with a flail. You know, joking's not my line. So I jumped right on his spine. He led me a dance, look you. Nearly broke my head in two. But I'm not a fool not quite. Like a vice, I held him tight. How that cunning rascal tried. Finally, he begged and cried. Spare my life this once, please do. For twelve months, I promise you. Not to break a single law. Christian folks to plague no more. I believed him on the spot. Off the devil's back I got. And Ivan then said no more. Yawned and soon began to snore. While his brothers, though they tried. Not to, laughed until they cried. Laughing at that booby's joke. You'd have thought that they would choke. Father, too, could not refrain. Laughed, and cried, and laughed again. Though it is a sin, they say. For old men to laugh that way. Since that night, I cannot say. How much time had passed away. For of this I heard no word. Nor from man, nor beast, nor bird. What is this to you or me? Whether one year passed, or three. Time can't be recalled, once fled. Let me tell my tale instead. Well, Dunalo Dash, I should say. This was on a holiday. Tipsy, reeled along the track. Leading to that shepherd's shack. There he saw a handsome pair. Steeds, with manes of golden hair. And beside them, in its stall. Stood a horse, so queer and small. Two humps on his little back. Ears a yard long, ice coal black. All the fumes immediately. Left Dunalo's head and he murmured, H.M. At last it's clear why that fool is sleeping here. Breathless bursting home, Dunalo cried excitedly, Gavrilo. Come and see that lovely pair. Our young fool has hidden there. Steeds with manes of golden hair. No one saw their likes, I swear. Fast as legs could carry, Dan. Barefoot, with Gavrilo ran. Through the fields, as though on wings. Heedless of the nettle stings. Thrice they fell, and thrice they rose. Bruised their eyes and tore their clothes. Ere they reached the shepherd's shack. Rubbing one another's back. Here, two charges met their gaze. Snorting, ruby eyes ablaze. Silken tails in ringlets streaming. Golden in the shadows gleaming. And their hoofs, of diamonds made. Were with monster pearls inlaid. Yes, it cannot be denied. Horses fit for tsars to ride. And they nearly burst from spleen. As they stared upon this scene. Th eldest, gaping, scratched his head. Where'd he get them from, he said. This just proves the ancient rule. Fortune favours but the fool. Though you'd rack your brains, you'd never 
raise a ruble, though you're clever. Say, Gavrilo let's go down. Sunday, to the fair in town. Sell them to the boyars there. We will share the taking square. And, with money, you'll agree. We can have a merry spree. Once we set our pockets jingling. While not in the slightest inkling. Of his horse's whereabout. Will he have, that foolish lout? Let him seek them high and low. Strike the bargain, brother so. Said and done and here, each brother. Crossed himself and kissed the other. They went home in glee together. Chatting, in the highest feather. Of the steeds, their future feast. And that little wonder beast. Slowly, time crept on its way. Hour by hour and day by day. Sunday came and found them dressed. For the town, in all their best. There they meant to sell their ware. Find out, at the harbour there. What strange ships had put to port. And what linen's merchants sought. Had Sultan his flag unfurled. To enslave the Christian world. See them at their icons praying. Then, for father's blessing staying. After which, in secret, they. Took the steeds and stole away. Night her shadows softly spread. And Ivan set out for bed. Through the village he went, swinging. Munching at his crust, and singing. Through the meadow now he skips. With his hands upon his hips. In the shack, upon his toes. Like a very lord, he goes. Everything was in its place. But the steeds of them no trace. Only tiny humpback, neighing. Fawned around his feet, a-playing. Flapping both ears left and right. Prancing gaily in delight. At this sight, Ivan wept sore. As he leaned against the door. Oh, my horse is black as night. With your golden mane so bright. Did not I look after you? What foul devil stole you? Who? Plague on him, the dirty dog. May he perish in a bog. When he to the next world goes. May he trip and break his nose. Oh, my horse is black as night. With your golden mane so bright. Humpback neighed and shook his head. Do not fret, Ivan, he said. Yes, your loss is great, I know. But I'll help you in your woe. Blame the devil for his deeds. Your two brothers stole those steeds. Dry your tears, Ivan make haste. We have not much time to waste. Mount my back when I say, go. Hold to me for all you know. Though I'm small that's true, of course. I'm as good as any horse. Once I get into my pace. Any demon I'll outrace. Saying this, he stretched out flat. On his back Ivan then sat. Grabbed his ears and held them tight. Shouting out with all his might. Little humpback sinews quivered. He stood on his feet and shivered. Shook his manner and, with a neigh. Like an arrow sped away. Only dust clouds marked the course. Of the rider and the horse. On they flew, as quick as thought. In a trice, the thieves were caught. Seeing him, his brothers stared. Scratched their heads, confused and scared. Wrathfully, Ivan exclaimed. Brothers, are you not ashamed? Though you're cleverer than Ivan. Still, Ivan's an honest man. I did not rob you not I. Th eldest, squirming, made reply. We are both to blame, I fear. But, dear brother listen here. And, consider if you please. That we lead no life of ease. Though we sow a lot of wheat. We can hardly make ends meet. Quitrens always overdue. The police, they fleece us too. So, Gavrilo, here, and I. All last night ne'er closed an eye. Talking of our sorry plight. And of how to put things right. 
So, to meet our many needs, we resolve to sell your steeds. For a thousand at the fair, not a ruble less, I swear. And, in gratitude to you, bring you back a gift or two. High-heeled boots of finest leather, and a cap with bells and feather. Then the old man's frail and ailing. He can work no more he's failing. Yet must dodder out his span. Come, you're not a fool, Ivan. If that's so, Ivan said, well, I suppose you'd better sell. My two golden crested horses. Take me with you let's join forces. If thoughts could, their thoughts would kill. But, perforce, they feigned goodwill. Soon the sky grew overcast. Colder, colder blew the blast. So they called a bivouac. So as not to lose the track. In a wood, the steeds were made. Fast beneath its leafy shade. There they made themselves at ease. Ate and drank beneath the trees. After which, in happy mood. Each made merry as he could. Soon, Dunalo saw a light. In the darkness of the night. Nudged Gavrilo on the sly. Cunningly, he winked an eye. Pointed where the light was burning. Coughed a muffled cough of warning. After which he scratched his head. My how dark it is, he said. If the moon would show her face. Even for a little space. How much better it would be. Why, the blindest owl can see. More than us but stay look there. Can you see it? I declare. Something's burning yes, a fire. Just the thing that we require. Listen, now, Vanusha dear. Go and fetch some embers here. For it really slipped my mind. And I left my flint behind. To himself says brother Dan. May you break your neck, young man. Says Gavrilo, do I care? Lord knows what is burning there. If a highwayman besets him. We forever can forget him. So our fool, who knew no care. Climbed upon his horse right there. Twined its manere round his wrist. Urged it on with heel and fist. Shouting out with all his might. Up his horse rose out of sight. Then Gavrilo cried in fright. Saints be with us all this night. Save us, Lord, from evil sin. Say what devil's under him. Brighter, brighter shone the light. Swifter, swifter was their flight. Till they halted where it lay. There, the field was bright as day. Lit by wondrous brilliant rays. Cold and smokeless in their blaze. Here, Ivan in stark surprise. Stared and said, why, bless my eyes. Look there's light in plenty there. But no smoke or heat I swear. Now, this is a curious light. Quoth his horse, yes, you're quite right. And you very well may stare. That's a firebird's feather there. But, Ivan, for your own sake. Touch it not, for in its wake. Many sorrows, many woes. Follow everywhere it goes. Growled our fool, you're telling me. Woes and sorrows we shall see. So he wrapped it up with care. In a rag to hide the glare. Hid it in his hat, and then. Galloped swiftly back again. Tied his horse fast to a tree. To his brothers then said he. When I got there, all I found was a burnt stump on the ground. I blew hard to raise a spark. Nearly burst there in the dark. And I puffed and puffed in vain. For it wouldn't burn again. Both his brothers laughed all night. At Ivan, in sheer delight. He, however, merely crept. Neath the wane and snoring, slept. Till the dawning of the day. When to town they drove away. Halting at the hostler's fair. Opposite the palace there. Now, there was an old tradition. That, without the mayor's permission. 
Nothing could be bought or sold. Nor for barter, nor for gold. As the church bells called for prayer. On his palfrey rode the mayor. Spurred and belted, furs on shoulders. Guarded by a hundred soldiers. Near him, bearded and sedate. Rode a crier in full state. Golden trumpet gaily sounding. Voice stentorian resounding. Oh yes, honest merchants there. Open up and sell your ware. And you watchmen stay you near. Guard their stalls keep eye and ear. Sharp, maintaining strictest order. Keep from riots and disorder. See no rogue, however sly. Fools good folk with hunted lie. Then the merchants loudly call. As each opens up his stall. Honest masters come this way. See what wares we have today. Oh, come by. Come by. Come by. Our goods always satisfy. Buyers flock like flies round honey. Choose their goods and pay their money. As the coins change hands and chink. Merchants to the watchman wink. Meanwhile, with his guards, the mayor. Halted at the hostler's fair. Where he saw a crowd so great. That it blocked up every gate. Surging like a stormy sea. Shouting, laughing lustily. Here, the mayor, who wished to see. What aroused such jollity. Gave his troops an order to. Clear the way and let him through. Hey, you ragamuffins there. Make way. Make way for the mayor. Shouted his bewhiskered soldiers. Cracking whips on backs and shoulders. Doffing hats, the crowd in pain. Stepped aside and made a lane. Then the mayor rode in the fair. Saw two chargers standing there. Handsome horses, black as night. Silken manes in ringlets bright. Golden in the sunlight streaming. Flowing tails, all golden gleaming. Here the old man stroked his beard. And his anger disappeared. Wondrous is God's world, quoth he. Countless are its marvel sea. And his guards bowed to the ground. Dumbstruck by his speech profound. Then the mayor gave out strict orders. Gainst all tumults and disorders. That those steeds, on no condition. Might be sold without permission. Set a guard, and off to court. Raced a hand in his report. Straightway to the Tsar went he. Pardon, gracious majesty. Cried the mayor, as he fell prone. Breathlessly before the throne. Be not angry with your slave. Suffer me to speak, I crave. Speak, vouchsafe the Tsar. Commence. But be sure your words make sense. I shall try, your majesty. I am Lord Mayor here, you see. I would give my life for you. Yes we know we know, tis true. Sire, I rode to Hostler's Fair. With my guard today, and there. I beheld a crowd, so great. That it blocked up every gate. So I told my men that they. Break the crowd and clear the way. Which they did, your majesty. In I rode what did I see. When I got inside the fair. I saw two such chargers there. Handsome horses, black as night. Silken manes in ringlets bright. Golden in the sunlight streaming. Flowing tails, all golden gleaming. And their hoofs, of diamonds made. Were with monster pearls inlaid. Cried the Tsar excitedly. We shall have to go and see. And, if they are all you say. We shall buy those two today. Ho! My coach. He clapped his hands. Lo, his coach already stands. Donned his robes and crown with care. And in haste drove to the fair. Followed by his guard of state. When he stopped outside the gate. All the people straight away. Kneeled and wildly cheered, hooray. In reply, 
The Tsar smiled brightly, bowed, and from his coach sprang lightly. Charmed by those two steeds, the Tsar gazed at them from near and far, praised and praised them once again, softly stroked each golden manet, gently patted each steed's spine, felt their necks, so sleek and fine. After he had gazed his fill, he turned round with right goodwill, saying, My good people, who owns these handsome chargers too? Who's the master? Here, Ivan. Arms akimbo, like a pan asterisk. Pushed his brothers both aside. Puffed his cheeks and proudly cried. Tsar, these steeds belong to me. I'm their owner, too, you see. Asterisk pan gentleman, tr. Will you sell them to me, say? No, I'm swapping them today. What will you be taking, then? Twice five caps and that makes ten. Full of silver that's my price. So the coins were in a trice. Counted out the Tsar, in pleasure. Gave five rubles for good measure. Generous a Tsar was he. Ten grey grooms in livery. Trimmed with gold and silver slashes. Each with gaily coloured sashes. Each with saffian whip in hand. Took the horse's bridles, and led them to the royal palace. But the steeds, in play, or malice, tripped their grooms and straightway ran. Bridles broken, to Ivan. Back the Tsar drove to Ivan. Said to him, Look here, my man. Now, my grooms can't hold those two. So, there's nothing else to do. But to come along with me. I shall issue a decree. Make you master of my horse. Like a lord, you'll live, of course. You'll have raiment of the best. Gold brocade upon your chest. On my royal word you'll see. Are you willing? Well, I'll be. In the palace I shall live. And to me, the Tsar will give. Handsome raiment of the best. Gold brocade upon my chest. Like a lord, I'll live in clover. Rule the royal stables over. I, a ploughboy, now will be. Voivode to his majesty. Well, I never. Your commission. I accept, Tsar, on condition. That you never treat me rough. Always let me sleep enough. Or you'll see no more of me. Whistling to his horses, he. Sauntered through the city, singing. Carelessly his mittens swinging. Followed by his steeds a prancing. And his humpbacked horse a dancing. To the rhythm of his song. And the marvel of the throng. As for his two brothers, they. Stowed the silver safe away. In their belts, then, in high feather. Had a drink or two together. And rode home in glee, once there. Shared the money fair and square. Married, mid much joy and laughter. Lived and prospered ever after. And the rest of all their days. Spoke of their Ivan with praise. Let us now forget those two. And, good people, Christians true. I'll amuse you if I can. With the deeds of our Ivan. How he ruled the stables over. Living like a lord in clover and was taken for a sprite. How he lost his feather bright. How he laid the firebird's snare. How he stole the Tsar made fair. How he found her ring for her. How he was her messenger. How the sun, at his request, gave the monster whale his rest. One more deed, but not the least. How he thirty ships released. How, when boiled in cauldrons, he came out handsome as could be. In a word, how our young man ended up as Tsar Ivan. Part 2. Tales, you know, are quickly spun. Deeds are sooner said than done. Nay again my tale proceeds. Of Ivan and of his deeds. 
of the tiny fallow bay. Talking horse, so wise and gay. Goats are grazing on the seas. Hills are overgrown with trees. Golden bridle, loosely swinging. See the stallion sunward winging. Far below him, forests glide. Thunderclouds, on every side. Race across the sky and dash. Hurling lightning as they crash. Wait this is the prelude to. What I shall be telling you. Have you heard of Buyan Island? Floating on the ocean wild, and. Of the maiden wondrous fair. Sleeping in a casket there. Forest beasts with gentle tread. Guard her grave, while overhead. Nightingales their music pour. Wait, my friends, a little more. Now my prelude's said and done. And my story is begun. Well, good friends and Christians true. Fellow countrymen look you. Our young fellow made his way. To the palace that fine day. He is master of the horse. And he doesn't pine, of course. For his brothers and his dad. And, indeed, why should our lad? Living in the royal court. Waste on them a single thought. He has garments gay and plenty. And possesses five and twenty. Chests, all full of caps and shoes. Out of which to pick and choose. All he does is eat his fill. Slake his thirst, and sleep at will. Now, the chamberlain began. As weeks passed, to watch Ivan. You should know, that he had been. Till Ivan came on the scene. Master of the royal horse. His was noble blood, of course. So, no wonder that he bore. Malice towards Ivan, and swore. That he'd die, but soon or late. Drive the upstart from the gate. But the rogue, his good time biding. And his double dealing hiding. Feigned to be Ivan's best friend. Masked his feelings to this end. Thinking, wait, you dirty lout. Time will come, I'll turn you out. So, the chamberlain began. As weeks passed, to watch Ivan. And he noticed that he never. Fed or groomed those steeds, or ever. Took them out for exercise. Yet those steeds, to his surprise. Always were, wiener paraded. Brushed and burnished, manes a braided. Tails, in flowing ringlets streaming. Glossy coats, like satin gleaming. Mangers always full of wheat. Which, it seemed, grew at their feet. And huge tubs, he could have sworn. Were fresh filled with mead each morn. Now, whatever can this mean? Sighed the chamberlain in spleen. Can it be, a goblin sprite? Comes and plays his pranks at night? Watch him that's what I shall do. And it should be easy to. Spin a story in a flash. And to settle that fool's hash. I shall tell the Tsar, of course. That the master of the horse is a wicked infidel and a sorcerer as well. That old Nick his soul has taken. That he is God's church forsaken. Bows before the cross of Rome. During Lent, eats meat at home. So, the former chief of horse. Yes, the chamberlain, of course. That same evening hid away. In a stall, beneath some hay. Blackest midnight came at last. Pitapat, his heart beat fast. Lying there, with bated breath. He peeped out, as still as death. Waiting for that sprite when hark. Loud the door creaked in the dark. And the horses poured the ground. As the sprite, without a sound. Entered though he looked, of course. Like the master of the horse. First he barred the door, then he took his hat off carefully, and from it he slowly took out his kerchief, which he shook, till the firebird's feather blazed, while the chamberlain, amazed, nearly screamed there in the hay, 
almost gave himself away. Unsuspectingly, the sprite. In a corn bin placed the light. After which, with tender care, he commenced to groom the pair. Braided their fine manes so long. While he sang a merry song. Meanwhile, crouching there and quivering. Hair all bristling, skin a shivering. Stared the chamberlain in fright. At the joker of the night. He could not believe his eyes. Sure the sprite was in disguise. It nor horns nor whiskers wore. Twas a handsome lad he saw. Hair with ribbons gaily dressed. Gold brocade upon his chest. Saffian boots right to his knees. This was Vonya, if you please. Now, what could this mean? Our spy. Stared again and rubbed his eye. And he growled out finally. Oh, so that is it. I see. Very well. I'll tell the Tsar. What a smart young man you are. Just you wait until tomorrow. You'll remember me with sorrow. But Ivan, quite unaware. Of the evil lurking there. Gaily sings his little song. As he braids those manes so long. After he had groomed each steed. Filled each tub with cooling mead. And the bins with choicest corn. He let out a sleepy yawn. Wrapped the feather up once more. Laid himself upon the floor. By his horses made his bed. With his hat beneath his head. With the dawn, the chamberlain. Stretched his limbs to ease the strain. And, on hearing our Ivan. Snoring loud as Yeroslan asterisk. Rose, and on his tiptoes crept. Cautiously to where he slept. Snatched the feather from his hat. Then he vanished just like that. As the Tsar woke with a snore. There he stood, right at the door. Bowing low, until his head. Hit the floor, he whined and said. To confess, O Majesty. I have dared to come to thee. Be not angry with thy slave. Suffer me to speak, I crave. Speak, without exaggeration. And without prevarication. Yawned the Tsar. If you tell fibs. No, the knout will count your ribs. Gathering his courage, he. Said, God bless your majesty. On the holy cross, forsooth. I am telling you the truth. All the court knows it is true. That Ivan conceals from you. That which can't be bought or sold. Nor for silver, nor for gold. It's a firebird's feather, see. Which he hides, your majesty. What? A firebird's. And he dare. Cursed varlet, such a rare. Oh, the villain wait and see. What a whipping there will be. That's not all, the chamberlain. Whispered, as he bowed again. Asterisk Yeroslan, a valiant knight, endowed with fabulous strength. And hero of Russian folklore. Were it but the feather, he. Might retain it, majesty. But, he boasts, as I have heard. That, did you but say the word. He could bring the bird of fire. To your royal chamber, sire. And the spy, with servile tread. On all fours approached the bed. Dropped the treasure and once more. Banged his head upon the floor. Long the tsar, enchanted, gazed. Chortled, stroked his beard, amazed. Bit the feather's tip, then he. Placed it under lock and key. Shouted in impatience and. As confirming his command. Waved his scepter in the air. Hey. You. Fetch me that fool there. All the lords in waiting ran. Instantly to fetch Ivan. But, colliding near the door. Fell and sprawled upon the floor. While the Tsar in huge delight. Roared with laughter at the sight. So his lords, all quick to see. What so pleased his majesty. Winks exchanged as they once more. 
threw themselves upon the floor. Whereupon, amused thereat, he gave each a brand new hat. After which they once more ran, hurrying, to fetch Ivan. And without an accident, this time, on their mission went. When they reached the stables, they rushed inside without delay, fell upon our poor fool there, kicked him, punched him, pulled his hair. Fully half an hour, or more. All Ivan did, was to snore. Finally, a stable groom. Woke him with a stable broom. Jumping up, Ivan bawled out. Varlets what are you about? I shall teach you not to worry. Me, you villains, in a hurry. When I'm sleeping in my bed. But the lords in waiting said. Up. The Tsar sent us to say. That you come without delay. Oh, the Tsar. Ah, well, then, wait. I will dress and go there straight. Yawning answered our Ivan. So he put on his kaftan. Tied his girdle in its place. Combed his hair and washed his face. And strode forth in pompous pride. Horse whip dangling by his side. When he reached his majesty. Our Ivan bowed low, then he. Hummed and hawed and puffed his chest. Said, why did you spoil my rest? Here, the Tsar jumped up in bed. Left I squinting, seeing red. Silence, wrathfully roared he. It is you must answer me. By what law and what decree? Have you from our majesty? Hidden what is ours by right? Yes the firebird's feather bright? Am I not your lawful Tsar? Answer, heathen that you are. But Ivan made answer bold. Waved his hand and shouted, Hold! When did I give you my hat? How could you discover that? What have you got second sight? You can lock me up, all right. You can have me beaten flat. I've no feather, and that's that. You'll be flogged. Now answer me. But I'm speaking plainly see. I've no feather and, how, pray. Could such wonders come my way? Here the Tsar sprang to the floor. Shook the feather with a roar. What is this? Now will you dare. Stand and contradict me there. Here Ivan gave just one look. Like a storm-tossed leaf he shook. Dropped his hat in sheer dismay. Ah, you don't know what to say. Said the Tsar. But wait, my man. Mercy, mercy, cried Ivan. Groveling upon the floor. At the Tsar's feet, sobbing sore. Pardon me this once, please do. And I'll lie no more to you. You'll be pardoned for the nonce. Seeing you have sinned but once. Said the Tsar. But bear in mind. I'll not always be so kind. Gracious, when I'm angry why? I make hairs and heads to fly. That's what I am like, my man. So, let's not waste words, Ivan. You have boasted, as I've heard. That, did I but say the word. You could bring the bird of fire. To the chamber of your sire. Now, do not say, no, to me. Do your best and bring one, see. Up Ivan bounced like a ball. Nothing of the sort at all. Shouted he, and wiped his eye. I that feather don't deny. But the talk about the bird. Is as false as it's absurd. Wrathfully, the Tsar's beard shook. What me argue with you? Look. If you do not bring to me. That firebird, in Senites three. To my royal chamber, now. By my royal beard I vow. Hide yourself where'er you please. Underground, or under seas. One asterisk eleven have you impaled, my man. Off, you scum. In tears, Ivan. To the hayloft made his way. Where his little humpback lay. Hearing him, his humpback ran. 
full of glee to meet Ivan. But on seeing him in tears, almost sobbed and drooped his ears. Why, Ivanushka, so sad? Tell me what's the matter, lad, said he, fawning round his knees. Put your mind, Ivan, at ease. Tell me what has happened, please. Just confide in me, Ivan. I will help you if I can. Are you ill? If not, then who? Has upset you? Tell me, do. And Ivan, in bitter tears, as he kissed his humpback's ears, said, that sorrow, have you heard? Bids me bring a firebird. Oh, whatever shall I do? In reply, his horse said, true. Your misfortune's great, I know. But I'll help you in your woe. You rejected my advice. Now, you have to pay the price. For remember, when you found that bird's feather on the ground. I told you, for your own sake. Not to touch it, in its wake. Many sorrows, many woes. Follow everywhere it goes. Now, Ivan, you see that I, when I warned you, told no lie. But, Ivan, twixt you and me, this is easy as can be. Service lies ahead, my man. Now, go to the Tsar, Ivan. Say to him in language plain. Tsar, I need the best of grain. And two troughs, then, if you please. Wine brought in from overseas. Tell them that they must make haste. For I have no time to waste. We'll be off at dawn of day. So Ivan went straight away. Told the Tsar in language plain. Tsar, I need the best of grain. And two troughs, then, if you please. Wine brought in from overseas. Tell them, too, they must make haste. For I have no time to waste. With the early dawn of day. I'll be going on my way. So the Tsar gave strict commands. To fulfill Ivan's demands. Called Ivan a brave young man. Said, God speed you, to Ivan. Dawn had scarce begun to peep. Humpback roused Ivan from sleep. Hey, my lad stop snoring, do. Up. Your duty's calling you. So Ivan got up and dressed. Warmly for his royal quest. Took the grain and took the wine. Tightly tied the troughs with twine. Put it all into a sack. Climbed upon his horse's back. Chewing on a piece of bread. To the rising sun he sped. Off to seek that firebird. Seven days they rode, I heard. When the eighth day dawned, they stood. In a dark and dense green wood. Here the humpback tossed his head. You will see a glade, he said. In the middle of this glade. Stands a hill, of silver made. There it is that every morn. Firebirds flock before the dawn. Water from the stream to drink. We will catch them there, I think. With these words, he swiftly ran. To the glade, with our Ivan. What a meadow met their sight. Blades of grass, like emeralds bright. And the breezes, as they blew. Scattered sparkles through the dew. Flowers sweet of beauty rare. Blossomed in the meadow there. In the middle of this glade. Rose a hill, of silver made. Like an airy tower bright. With its summit hid from sight. And the sun, with gentle blaze. Gilds it with its summer rays. Till the peak in splendor bright. Flashes like a beacon light. Up the hill the humpback flew. And he climbed a mile or two. Then he stopped and tossed his head. Flapping both his ears, and said. Look it's getting dark, Ivan. You must watch as best you can. Mix some wine and grain enough. But not more, to fill one trough. And to hide yourself from sight. Neath the other trough sit tight. Make no sound 
and mind you keep. Eyes and ears alert don't he sleep. You will see, at dawn of day. Flocks of firebirds come this way. They will peck your grain, and chatter. In their language but no matter. Seize the nearest one, Ivan. Hold it fast as fast you can. When you have that firebird tight. Shout for me with all your might. I shall come without delay. Won't they burn my fingers, say? To his horse exclaimed Ivan. As he spread out his caftan. Mittens I shall have to wear. They might be too hot to bear. Here, from sight his humpback swept. With a grunt, Ivan then crept. Underneath a trough, where he. Lay as still as still could be. Suddenly, at dead of night. All the hillside blazed with light. And it seemed as though twere day. Twas a flock of firebirds they. Swooped upon the wine-soaked wheat. Screamed and hopped on drunken feet. While Ivan, from them well hidden. In his trough, as he was bidden. Gazed on them in wonder and. Waving wildly with his hand. Murmured, goodness gracious me. What strange creatures do I see? Now, if I could catch them all. It would make a lovely haul. Quite a half a hundred there. They are beauties, I declare. Feet all red, upon my word. But their tails they read just absurd. Surely chickens never had. Tails like that, Ivan my lad. Then again this blinding light. Father's stove is not so bright. Our Ivan his long speech ended. And his heavy trough up ended. Grunting softly from the strain. Crawled until he reached the grain. Then the nearest bird he seized. By its shining tail and sneezed. Oh, my little humpback dear. Hurry fast come, do you hear? I have caught a firebird see. Roared our fool most lustily. Lo, the humpback stood beside him. Saying, good now quickly hide him. In your sack, and hold on tight. For we haven't got all night. But Ivan the fool said, oh. Let me scare them ere we go. Look they the had so much to eat. That they can't stand on their feet. Said Ivan, and then and there. With his sack he beat the air. In a blinding blaze of light. Started up the flock in fright. Wheeling in a ring of fire. Soaring to the clouds, and higher. While Ivan, with crazy laughter. Waved his mittens, running after. Yelling madly, just as though. He had swallowed soap, you know. When the birds had gone from view. Our Ivan, without ado, made the royal treasure fast, and set off for home at last. Finally, they reached the court, and the Tsar cried, Have you brought me the firebird? While he eyed his attendant by his side, who, the chamberlain, I mean, stood and bit his nails in spleen. Yes, of course, replied Ivan. Then, where is it, my young man? Wait a minute, and you'll see. Bid them first, your majesty. Shut the chamber casement tight. Draw the shades, keep out the light. All the lords in waiting ran. Closed the casement for Ivan. Flinging down his sack with pride. Up say Daisy, dear, he cried. Blinded by the flood of light. They all screamed their eyes in fright. And the Tsar, in accents dire. Shouted, gracious. We're on fire. Water call the fire brigade. What a fire this fool has made. Tears a streaming from his eyes. Our birdcatcher, laughing, cries. No, no this is not a fire. It is but your firebird, sire. It's a lovely plaything, see. That I've brought your majesty. Said the Tsar for all to hear. Vonya, friend, I love you, dear. 
and, in token of my joy, be my royal groom, my boy. Then the former chief of horse, yes, the chamberlain, of course, muttered to himself in hate. No, you ill-bred milksop wait. You won't always prosper so. Have such foolish luck oh no. I'll get you in trouble, yet. Yes, I will, my little pet. Now, one evening, three weeks after. Loud the kitchen rang with laughter. Palace cooks and servants sat. Round the table for a chat. Passing round the golden mead. While one Yeroslin did read. You should see, another said. What a lovely book I read. I just borrowed it today. Why, it takes your breath away. Actually, it's pretty small. Only has five tales in all. But I'm sure that you have never heard of tales so strange and clever. In one voice, they cried aloud. Tell us, brother, don't be proud. Well then, make your choice, said he. There are five so let us see. First, we have the beaver beast. Then the lady from the east. Next God help me here you are. Yes, the third's about a tsar. Prince Bobble is number four. Then, you know, there's just one more. Number five the last of all. Which I simply can't recall. Never mind, then, dash, wait a minute dash. Has it got a beauty in it? So it has. The fifth, I swear. Tells about that tsar made fair. So, my friends, just choose and say. Which one shall I read today? Of the Tsar maid, they replied. We are tired of Tsars, they cried. So the servant, then and there, started with a solemn air. In a distant clime, my brothers, flows an ocean, like no others. And it washes foreign shores. And it's sailed by blackamoors. From true Christian soil, however, noblemen, nor peasants, never, sailed those pagan waters though. Merchants who have sailed, and know, tell about a maiden fair, living on that ocean there. She's no common maiden, see. Daughter to the moon is she. And she's sister to the sun. This fair maid, the stories run. In a scarlet dress arrayed. Sails a boat of gold it's made. And she wields a silver oar. Steers that boat from shore to shore. Gusly in her hand, she sings. As she plucks its silver strings. At these words, the chamberlain. Bounded up, as if insane. To the royal chamber sped. Where he found the Tsar in bed. Bowed his head, and with a bang hit the floor, and whining sang. To confess, O Majesty, I have dared to come to thee. Be not angry with thy slave. Suffer me to speak, I crave. Speak up, was the Tsar's reply. But be sure you do not lie. And the crafty Chamberlain murmured, as he bowed again. We sat round the kitchen fire. Drinking to your health, O sire. And we heard a story there. Of the wondrous Tsar made fair. And your groom got up and said. Swearing by your royal head. That he knew this birdie yes. So he called her, I confess. And, O oh sire, it's also true. That he bragged to catch her, too. And the chamberlain once more. Banged his head upon the floor. Hey! My groom at once to me, roared the Tsar impatiently. Satisfied, the Chamberlain raised himself erect again, while the lords in waiting ran hastily to fetch Ivan in his nightshirt, straight from bed. To the Tsar Ivan was led. Listen, thus the Tsar began. I have been informed, Ivan, that just now, my lad, you said. Swearing by my royal head. 
that, did I but say the word. You could bring another bird. For your monarch you did swear. You could catch the Tsar made fair. God save you from every harm. Cried the Tsar's groom in alarm. Really, only in a dream. Could I say such things, I deem. But no matter what you say. You will not fool me this way. Wrathfully, the Tsar's beard shook. What me argue with you? Look. If you do not bring to me. That Tsar made, in Senites three. To my royal chamber now. By my royal beard, I vow. Hide yourself where'er you please. Underground, or under seas. I'll have you impaled, my man. Off, you scum. In tears, Ivan. To the hayloft made his way. Where his little humpback lay. Why, Ivanushka, so sad. What's the matter now, my lad? Little humpbacked horse inquired. Are you ill? Or only tired? What's the trouble? Tell me who. Has upset you? Tell me, do. And Ivan, in bitter tears. Kissed his little horse's ears. Sobbing, oh, my humpback dear. I must bring the Tsar maid here. Oh, whatever shall I do? In reply, his horse said, True. Your misfortune's great, I know. But I'll help you in your woe. You rejected my advice. Now, you have to pay the price. But, Ivan, twixt you and me. This is easy as can be. Service lies ahead, my man. Now, go to the Tsar, Ivan. Say, to catch the Tsar maid, sire. Two large cloths I shall require. And a tent of gold brocade. And a dinner service, made. All of gold, from overseas. Sweetmeats, too, her taste to please. So Ivan with fearless tread. Went back to the Tsar, and said. For the Tsar maid's capture, sire. Two large cloths I will require. And a tent of gold brocade. And a dinner service, made. All of gold, from overseas. Sweetmeats, too, her taste to please. Ah, at last you've found your head. Yawned the Tsar, and from his bed. Gave his lord's most strict commands. To fulfill Ivan's demands. Called Ivan a brave young man. Said, God speed to you, Ivan. Dawn had scarce begun to peep. Humpback roused Ivan from sleep. Hey, my lad, stop snoring, do. Up. Your duty's calling you. So Ivan got up and dressed. Warmly for his royal quest. Took the tent of gold brocade. Took the dinner service, made. All of gold, from overseas. Sweetmeats, too, her taste to please. Took the cloths, and everything. Tied up tightly with a string. Put it all into a sack. Climbed upon his horse's back. Chewing on a piece of bread. To the rising sun he sped. Off to seek the Tsar made fair. Seven days they rode, I swear. When the eighth day dawned, they stood. In a dark and dense green wood. Here the humpback stopped, and said. See the ocean lies ahead. There it is, the whole year round. This Tsar maiden can be found. Only twice a year, not more. Does she spend the day on shore? And, tomorrow, I've a notion. We shall see her on the ocean. Then he galloped fast once more. Till they reached the ocean shore. In the distance, they could see. One white wave roll languidly. Then Ivan dismounted. Here. Said the humpback in his ear. Pitch your tent of gold brocade. Lay the cloth, and service, made. All of gold from overseas. And the sweets her taste to please. Hide behind the tent, and see. That you don't act foolishly. Yonder see, 
the boat is nearing. With the Tsar maid in it, steering. She'll walk in the tent but you. Let her be, whate'er you do. Let her walk inside the tent. Eat and drink to heart's content. When you hear her ghostly play. Rush inside without delay. Seize the Tsar maid hold her tight. Shout for me with all your might. You won't need to call me twice. I'll be with you in a trice. And we'll go but mind you keep. All your wits awake don't he sleep. For if you but let her go. You'll be in for lots of woe. Then he flew off, like the wind. Leaving our Ivan behind. And Ivan, as he was told. Hid behind the tent of gold. There he pierced the gold brocade. So that he could watch the maid. As the noonday sun shone clear. To the shore the maid drew near. Gusly in her hand, she went. Straight inside the golden tent. H.M. So that's the Tsar maid fair. Breathe the grim dash, I do declare. All those tales were simply lies. When they praised her to the skies. She is not the least bit pretty. Pale and skinny, more's the pity. And her chicken legs, so thin. Why it really is a sin. Let who wills, take her to wife. I would not, to save my life. Here the Tsar maid plucked a string. And so sweetly did she sing. That Ivan, quite unaware. Drooped his sleepy head right there. Closed his eyes in slumber deep. Lulled by her sweet voice to sleep. Slowly sank the sun from sight. Suddenly, he woke in fright. By him, furiously neighing. Stood his horse and kicked him, saying. Sleep, my lad, sleep till tomorrow. Sleep, and wake to grief and sorrow. You will be impaled, not I. Here Ivan began to cry. Sobbing on his horse's manner. Saying, I won't sleep again. Pardon me this once, please do. Well, the Lord will pardon you. Said his humpback in reply. Maybe all's not lost, we'll try. And perhaps we'll mend things yet. But no sleeping don, t forget. For again, at break of day. That fair maid will steer this way. She will go into the tent. On your honeyed mead intent. Only mind what I have said. Otherwise, you'll lose your head. Humpback disappeared once more. And Ivan searched on the shore. For some flints and rusty nails. From the wrecks of stranded sails. To arouse him, should once more. He, by chance, begin to snore. It was early morning when. That Tsar maiden came again. Beached her boat once more and sped. By the fragrant odors led. To the dainties which were laid. In the tent of gold brocade. And again she plucked a string. And so sweetly did she sing. That Ivanushka once more. Felt as sleepy as before. No, you nasty little cheat. Growled Ivan, upon his feet. This time you won't get away. You will not fool me today. And, unmoved by her sweet song. Seized her by her tresses long. Help me, help me, humpback dear. Hurry to me, do you hear? In a flash, his horse stood there. Saying, well done, I declare. Mount me quickly, now, Ivan. Hold her tight as tight you can. At the palace gates, at last. They arrived, the Tsar ran fast. To the fair Tsar maiden and. Led her by her lily hand. Neath a silken canopy. To his royal throne, then he. Fondly gazing in her eyes. Said, with honeyed voice, and sighs. Peerless, beautiful princess. Be my bride. Agree say yes. When I first saw you, desire. Burned within my breast like fire. Oh. Your lovely eyes so bright. 
They will haunt me day and night. They will torture me by day. And at nights, drive sleep away. Say but one sweet word to me. Everything is ready, see. And tomorrow, oh my life. We'll be wedded man and wife. And live happy as the may. She, however, turned away. From the Tsar, with scornful eye. And refused to make reply. But this only added fire. To his passionate desire. Kneeling, he her fingers pressed. Tenderly her hands caressed. And repeated foolishly. Say but one sweet word to me. Wherein have I grieved you, pray? Is my love so hateful, say? Lack a day, and woe is me. Said that Tsar made mournfully. If you love me truly, bring. Me in three days' time, my ring. Lying in the ocean bed. Only then can we be Wednesday. Eagerly that Tsar roared, hey. Fetch Ivan at once, I say. And excited, almost ran. Off himself to fetch Ivan. When Ivan appeared, the Tsar. Turned to him and murmured, ah. Vonya here's a job for you. Go down to the ocean blue. From its bottom, you must bring. Me the Tsar made signet ring. If you execute this task. I will give you all you ask. But I've only just got back. And my joints are fit to crack. Now you've found another quest. Can't I even have a rest? Sira. Do you tell me tarry? Can't you see I want to marry? Raged the Tsar, and with a roar. Stamped his foot upon the floor. No more arguments, I say. Now, be off without delay. As Ivan turned round to go. The Tsarevna called out. Oh. Listen visit, on your way. My green mansions, and convey. Greetings to my mother dear. Say, her daughter do you hear? Asks, why she conceals her rays. These three nights and these three days. Why my handsome brother shrouds. His bright face in gloomy clouds. Never sending rays of love. From the misty heights above. Don't forget my message, now. As Ivan made his last bow. I will not forget, he said. If it doesn't slip my head. But please tell me who's your brother? Also, tell me who's your mother? I don't know them, I confess. In reply, the fair princess. Said, the moon she is my mother. And the sun he is my brother. See you're back in time, my man. Called the bridegroom to Ivan. Who retired and made his way. To his humpback in the hay. Why, Ivanushka, so sad. What's the matter now, my lad? Said his humpback with a neigh. Help me, little humpback, pray. For the Tsar now wants to wed. That there skinny girl, he said. And, Ivan said to his horse. He must send me off, of course. On a journey to the sea. Only gave three days to me. And some cursed signet ring. From the seabed I must bring. For that skinny tsar maid, I. Have to travel to the sky. Give her compliments and love. To the sun and moon above. And besides, there are a few. Questions I must ask them, too. Said his horse, twixt you and me. This is easy as can be. Service, brother, lies ahead. Now, you just go off to bed. Early in the morning, we. Will be travelling to the sea. In the morning, fresh from rest. Our Ivan, now warmly dressed. Put three onions in his pack. Climbed upon his horse's back. And sped on his distant quest. Brothers let me have a rest. Part 3 Till yesterday, Marka used to follow the plough. But look at him today he's a voivode now. Iara ira, tararai. 
all the horses ran away. But the peasants, at long last, caught them all and bound them fast. Master Raven, croak, 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 blows his trumpet on an oak, and amuses Christian true, singing, now folks, listen, do. Once a peasant and his wife led a very merry life. He was always blithe and gay. She was merry as the May. When he danced and when she sang. Then with mirth the village rang. This is but the prelude, friends. And my tale starts when it ends. Hark to what the housefly singing. As upon our gates it's swinging. What's the price for news today? News fresh news what will you pay? Have you heard? The new wed wife. Got the beating of her life. From her husband's mother who tied her to the oven, too. Trussed her up, secure and neat. Took her shoes from off her feet. Leave the lads alone, she said. And at nights just stay in bed. Now my prelude's said and done. And my story is begun. Well, Ivan rode off to bring back the Tsar maid's signet ring. And his horse flew like the wind leaving miles and leagues behind. Twenty thousand leagues, ere night, covered in a single flight. Near the sea, he loudly neighed, saying, we will reach a glade. In a minute, maybe more, leading to the ocean shore, where, with monster head and tail, lies the monster marvel whale. These ten years he lies in pain, ignorant of how to gain. Pardon, to this very day. He will humbly beg and pray. That you pardon for him gain. When we reach the son's domain. Promise him, Ivan, and see. That you do so faithfully. When they reached the glade, they flew. Straight towards the ocean blue. There, across it, lay the whale. Monster head and monster tail. He was all one mass of holes. From his ribs grew stakes and poles. On his tail a forest black. And a village on his back. Peasants on his lip drove ploughs. Children danced between his brows. Oak trees on his huge jaws grew. Maidens there sought mushrooms, too. Clatter, 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 clack. Rode the humpback o'er his back while the monster marvel wail eyed them as he swished his tail, opening his huge jaws wide, as most bitterly he sighed. May God speed you, gentles too. Whither bound, and whence are you? We're the Tsar maid's envoys, see. From the capital are we. Little humpbacked horse replied. Eastward, to the sun, we ride. To his residence of gold. Fathers, may I make so bold, said the whale, to beg of you. When you reach the heavens blue, ask the sun, how long must I suffer this disgrace, and why? For what sins, let him explain. Must I bear this grief and pain? Yes, yes, monster whale, all right, yelled Ivan with all his might, while the whale, with bitter cries, begged Ivan, between his sighs. Please have pity on poor me. These ten years I'm suffering, see. Do this favor for me, do. I will serve you some day too. Yes, yes, monster whale, all right. Yelled Ivan with all his might. Then his horse, with one leap bore. Vonya to the other shore. Leaving clouds of dust behind. As he flew on like the wind, near or far, or high or low. How they travelled, I don't know. Nor did anybody say. If they saw them on the way. Tales, you know, are quickly spun. Deeds are sooner said than done. Only, brothers, I did hear. Indirectly, though, I fear. That the humpback came to where. Earth meets sky 
and it is there. Peasant maidens, spinning flax. Use the clouds as distaff racks. Bidding Mother Earth goodbye. Vonya rode up to the sky. Like a prince, he proudly flew. Through the skies, his hat askew. What a wonder oh, I say. Mused Ivan aloud, as they. Rode the cloudy meadows blue. Though our country's pretty, too. But compared with this blue sky. It's not worth a button why. Our old earth down there is so. Black and muddy, as you know. Here, the soil is bright and blue. And how brilliant it is, too. But, my horse, what can that be? In the east, up yonder, see. Gleaming like the dawn up there. That must be, I do declare. Nothing but the sun's chief city. But how high up, more's the pity. That's the Tsar maid's tower you see. Our Tsaritsa's that's to be. Nade the humpback in his ear. Every night the sun sleeps here. And, here every day, the moon. Comes to take her rest at noon. Palace portals met their sight. Crowned in crystal, gleaming bright. All its pillars made of gold. Twisted cunningly, and scrolled. On each pillar shone a star. Round the palace, near and far. Fragrant gardens, fair to see. Spread in verdant brilliancy. Birds of paradise were singing. In their golden cages, swinging. Mong the silver branches there. Mansions rose there, tall and fair. Stars upon the palace spire. Burning with a holy fire. Formed a Christian cross, whose rays. Set the heavens all ablaze. Through the portals then they rode. And Ivan, dismounting, strode. To the palace, with bare head. There he saw the moon, and said. Greetings, gracious moon Moonovich. I'm Ivanushka Petrovich. And from countries far away. Greetings I bring you today. Take a seat, Ivan Petrovich. Murmured gracious moon Moonovich. Tell me now, and let me know. Why you left the earth below. For our realms so bright and blue. From what people, land are you? How you found your way, confess. Tell me all the truth, no less. From a land on earth I come. From a realm of Christendom. Sitting down, Ivan replied. I have crossed the ocean wide. My Tsaritsa's will to do. In your palace, bow to you. Then repeat these words now here. Tell my darling mother dear. That her daughter down below. On the earth, desires to know. Why, for these three nights and days. She conceals from her her rays. Why my handsome brother shrouds. His bright face in gloomy clouds. Never sending rays of love. From his misty heights above, dash. This is all, I think though young. She has got a silver tongue. It's not easy to recall. Every word that she let fall. Which Tsaritsa who is she? Why, the Tsar maid, don't you see? What our Tsar maid, you don't say? It was you stole her away. With a gasp cried Moon Moonovich. And Ivanushka Petrovich. Answered, why, yes surely I'm. I'm the royal groom, I am. And our Tsar gave me just three. Weeks to find and fetch her, see. Otherwise, you see, he said. I would lose my curly head. Hear the moon in glad surprise. Hugged Ivan and dried her eyes. Ark, Ivanushka Petrovich. Murmured gracious Moon Moonovich. You have brought such news today. That I don't know what to say. When we lost our dear princess. How we mourned, you'll never guess. That's the reason why, you see. I've been grieving bitterly. These three nights and these three days. In dark clouds concealed my rays. 
All this time I mourned and wept. Never ate a crumb, nor slept. This is why her brother shrouds. His bright face in gloomy clouds. Why he sends no warming rays. Down to earth these many days. Shedding many a bitter tear. Mourning for his sister dear. Let me know, though is she well. Is she homesick for us, tell. She'd be pretty, I would say. But she's wasting right away. She's as skinny as can be. Only skin and bones, you see. When she's married, though, no doubt. She'll improve and get quite stout. For the Tsar will wed her soon. What? The villain, screamed the moon. Why he's eighty, if a day. And he wants to wed with May. I declare, upon my life. She will never be his wife. See what that old nasty toad. Wants to reap, who never sowed. Why, his greedy is his vain. Here Ivan spoke up again. Please do not deny this boon. For the whale, O oh gracious moon. O'er the ocean down below. Lies a monster whale, you know. He is all one mass of holes. From his ribs stick stakes and poles. And, poor thing, he begged me to. Speak for him when I saw you. Why has he deserved this pain? And how can he pardon gain? Will he get his freedom soon? In reply, the lustrous moon. Said, he bears this punishment. For, without the Lord's consent. Thirty ships, one day, he swallowed. As their ocean course they followed. If he sets them free again. God will take away his pain. All his wounds he will assuage. And reward him with old age. Here Ivan rose from his chair. Said, farewell with courtly air. Thrice he kissed the bright moon's face. Clasping her in warm embrace. Well, Ivanushka Petrovich. Murmured gracious Moon Moonovich. Many, many thanks to you. From my son and from me, too. Put my daughter's mind at ease. With my blessing, Vonya, please. Tell my daughter that I say. Mothers with you night and day. Cease from grieving sigh no more. Soon will end your sorrow sore. For you'll never never wed. Any grey beard, toothless head. But a young and handsome man. God be with you, now, Ivan. Bowing low as best he knew. Vonya climbed his humpback true. Whistled like a noble knight. Then rode back with all his might. Next day, our Ivan once more. Came up to the ocean shore. Clatter, 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 clack. Rode he over that whale's back. While the monster marvel whale. Sighed and slowly waved his tail. Saying, sighs about my boon. Will I get my freedom soon? But the humpback merely said. Wait, O oh whale, and ran ahead. To the village marketplace. Where he called the populace. Tossed his coal-black manet and head. Snorted thrice, and loudly said. Heed my words, O oh Christians true. Mark what I am telling you. If you wish to keep away. From a briny grave today. Get you gone this minute, now. Wonders will take place, I vow. For the monster whale will turn. And the sea will seethe and churn. Hear the peasants, great and small. Christians true they one and all. Hurried off to home and farm. Crying out in wild alarm. Gathered all their carts, and placed. All their goods on them in haste. And, with many a woeful wail. Fled from off that monster wail. And, by noon, you could not find. Anybody left behind. Twas as though Mamai's fierce horde had swept the land with fire and sword. O'er its tail the humpback sped, reached and bent down to its head, shouted loud as loud could be, 
Listen, monster whale, to me. All this is your punishment. 4. Without the Lord's consent. 30 ships, one day, you swallowed. As their ocean course they followed. If you set them free again, he will take away your pain. All your wounds he will assuage. And reward you with old age. And, when his long speech was said, bit his bridle, tossed his head, gave one leap and lo, once more, stood upon the distant shore. Then the monster whale turned round, like a mighty heaving mound, threshed the ocean with his tail, and a fleet of thirty sail, one by one cast from his jaws, sails and sailors, boats and oars. Such a din here rent the deep, that the seeking woke from sleep. Brazen guns in broadsides flashed, trumpets blared and cymbals crashed, and the chaplain with his choir held a mass amid the fire. White sails were unfurled at last, flags flew gaily from each mast, and the sailors sang this song as they rowed their ships along, o'er the billows, o'er the sea, o'er the ocean wide and free, at the bottom of the world. Fly our ships with sails unfurled. All the ships sailed out of view. Hidden by the billows blue. While the monster marvel whale. Threshed the waters with his tail. Opened up his jaws so wide. Lifted up his voice and cried. Tell me, friends, what can I do? In return, or give to you. Colored seashells, do you wish? Would you care for golden fish? Lovely pearls? Oh anything. You may ask for, I will bring. No, oh whalefish, said Ivan. We don't need them, if you can. We would rather have you bring. Us the Tsar made signet ring. From the bottom of the sea. For our Tsar's bride that's to be. Certainly four friends like you. There is nothing I won't do. Ere the sun sets, I will bring. You the lovely maiden's ring. Said the whale, and sank like lead. To the very ocean bed. There, the monster marvel whale. Raised his voice and thumped his tail. Called the tribe of sturgeons, and. Thus delivered his command. Ere the sun sets, you must bring. Me the fair Tsar Maiden's ring. It is hidden in a chest. Who fulfills this my behest? Will receive a title he. Privy counsellor will be. But, if I am not obeyed. On my word I'll have you flayed. At these words, the sturgeons bowed. And withdrew in order proud. In another hour or so. Two white sturgeons, swimming slow. Humbly bending head and tail. Thus addressed the monster whale. Be not wrathful, O great Tsar. All the oceans, near and far. We have searched and ploughed but we. Of that ring no sign could see. Of your subjects, but one fish. That's the perch can do your wish. He's at home in all the seas. He will find that ring with ease. But, perhaps it was in spite. That he left his home last night. Have him found and brought to me. To my cabin, instantly. Thundered wrathfully the whale. Wiggling whiskers, fins and tail. Bowing low, the sturgeons raced. To the county court in haste. There they had a royal writ. Drawn up instantly to wit. That the brawling perch, when caught. To his majesty be brought. It was pending copperplate. By the bream, in duplicate. And the sheepfish, counsellor. Signed without the least demur. Then the lobster and the eel. Sealed it with the royal seal. Called a pair of dolphins, who. Were forthwith commissioned to. Institute a thorough search. For that vagrant brawling perch. And, when they had found the same. Seize him, in the royal name. 
and immediately to hail. Him before the royal whale. Hear the dolphins bow descent. And to seek the perch they went. So they searched an hour, or more. All the seas from shore to shore. All the lakes they searched, and they. Searched each river, creek and bay. For the perch but all in vain. And, chagrined, turned back again. Almost shedding tears for shame. Suddenly, from somewhere came. Unexpectedly, a cry. From a little pond nearby. To the pond they turned, and they. Dived below without delay. There, the perch in furious war. With a little carp they saw. Hiss the devil take you now. Roared the runner's dash, what a row. One might think from your loud cries. You were fighting for a prize. Who asked you to interfere? Cried the perch, who showed no fear. I'm no joker for two pins. I would rip you with my fins. Oh, you brawling vagabond. You, of squabbling always fond. You would only gad about. Rascal you, and fight and shout. Home and you just don't agree. But why argue with you see? Here's the Tsar's you case that you. Come to him without ado. Then they drag the vagabond. By his whiskers, through the pond. To the whale, the perch fish, he. Yelled and struggled furiously. Brothers let me give him one. Little punch, and I'll be done. Why, that carpfish, publicly. Yesterday insulted me. Called me names, and cursed me, too. Let me get at him, please do. Long and loud he shouted, till. Willy-nilly, he grew still. While the dolphins swam with him. Through the seas, in silence grim. Hauling him by gills and fins. To the whale, for his black sins. Traitor son what does this mean? You are late where have you been? Wrathfully roared out the whale. And the perch, all meek and pale. Begged for pardon on his fins. And confessed to all his sins. Well, I'll pardon you this time. If you expiate your crime. And fulfill my royal wish. Said the monarch of the fish. I shall only be too proud. On his fins, the perch squealed loud. You are always in and out. Of the oceans and no doubt. So that Tsar maids ring. Yeah, yeah. I can find it straight away. Well, be off with you, and see. That you bring it instantly. Then the perch, with humble tail. Bowed and left the royal whale. Railed the servants to their face. Tried to kiss a pretty dace. Punched a dozen sprats in play. Ere he went upon his way. After which, he fearlessly. Dived into the slimy sea. And, from out the ocean bed. Dug a casket with his head. Weighing no less than a ton. This is easier said than done. Cried the perch, he gave a shout. For the herrings to come out. Though the herrings did their best. Pushed and crowded round the chest. Squeaking, squealing, high and low. Yo heave ho, and a yo, ho ho. All their efforts were in vain. They grew hoarse from cries and strain. While that casket still stuck fast. Till the perch cried out at last. Your real herrings, yes indeed. Vodka? Nouts is what you need. Then, in dudgeon, quickly made. Off to seek the sturgeon's aid. All the sturgeons flocked around. And, without a single sound. Raised the little jewel box. Stuck fast in the mud and rocks. Well, you fellows just take care. Said the perch dash, and now, repair. To the Tsar, while I shall go. Home, and take a rest below. My poor eyes, they just can't keep. Open they re so full of sleep. And the sturgeons, then and there. 
swam off to the Tsar with care. While the brawling vagabond made his way toward the pond, whence he had been hauled away, somewhat earlier that day, back to fight the carp, maybe. I can't say no fish told me. But forget him, if you can. Let's return to our Ivan. Calm reigned on the ocean, and, humming mournful, on the sand. Vonya sat with great concern, waiting for the whale's return. On the beach, by Vonya's side, slept his humpback true and tried. Evening shadows fell apace, and the sun had run his race, tinged the heavens with the blaze of his slowly dying rays. But no token of the whale. May you rot from head to tail. Nasty boaster, cried Ivan. You deceiving sea shaitan. Promised faithfully you'd bring. Ere night fell, the Tsar maid's ring. See the sun has almost set. And you haven't brought it yet. Liar, here, the ocean surged. And the monster whale emerged. For the kindness you did me. I have kept my promise see dash. Quoth he to Arvonia, and plump the casket on the sand. So, the shore rocked to and fro. Now I've paid my debt, I'll go. But should you need me anew, call me, and I'll come to you. I'll remember till I die. What you've done for me goodbye. More than this, he did not say. Gave one splash and swam away. Humpback horse jumped up, awake. Gave his manair and tail a shake. At Ivanushka he glanced. Turned a somersault, and pranced. Whale Waleovich. Marvellous. You have paid your debt to us. Thank you, monster whale, called out. Little humpback with a shout. Now, Ivan, do not delay. Let's be going on our way. Three days have already passed. And tomorrow is our last. Our old man will die of sorrow. If we don't get back tomorrow. Said Ivan, I've done my best. But I cannot raise that chest. I'd be very happy to. But it's more than I can do. Though I tried three times to lift it. Yet I couldn't even shift it. It must hold at least a score. Or a hundred fiends, or more. Hear his horse, without a sound. Raised the casket from the ground. To his neck, with one light kick. And then said, now, mount me, quick. Time is nearly up, you know. And we still have far to go. Horse and rider, tired and worn. Reached the palace gates at dawn. And the Tsar ran out to meet him. Where's my ring, was all his greeting. Vonya got off from his horse. Proudly answered, here, of course. And, a little casket, too. Call the guards, though, for look you. Yes, it may seem small, but yet. It could crush the fiend, I'll bet. So the guards were called, and they. Took the jewel box away. Then the Tsar, he forthwith sped. To the Tsar maid, and he said. In a sweet and tender voice. Dear, your ring is found rejoice. Now, permit me to repeat. There's no obstacle, my sweet. To prevent us, O oh my life. From becoming man and wife. In the morning, but, my dear. Come and see, your ring is here. Yes, I know, I know, she said. Still we cannot yet be Wednesday. Why can you not be my wife? Why, I love you more than life. And, forgive my boldness, do. I just want to marry you. If you don't, at dawn tomorrow. I shall die of grief and sorrow. Oh, sir, it's a pity me. But the Tsar maid said, said she. Only look you re old and grey. I'm but fifteen and a day. We can't marry if we do. All the Tsars will laugh at you. 
saying there goes youth with age. But the Tsar replied in rage. Mock me. Only let them dare. They won't laugh again, I swear. I shall put them all to flight. Kith and kin to death I'll smite. Even then, the Tsar maid said. You and I cannot be Wednesday. I won't marry you remember. Roses don't bloom in December. I am beautiful let's see. What can you boast of to me? Quoth the Tsar, I may be old. Yet I am both gay and bold. When I dress myself a bit. Everybody will admit. That I'm handsome as can be. But what need of this, said he. If but you and I be Wednesday. But the Tsar maid merely said. Never, never in my life. Will I ever be the wife. Of an old, old man like you. Grey-haired, ugly, toothless, too. Frowning, as he scratched his head. Here the old Tsar only said. Now, whatever shall I do? How I want to marry you. Yet the only thing you say. Is, forever nay and nay. But again the Tsar maid said. Grey hairs I shall never wed. You regain your youth anew. And I'll gladly marry you. Oh, Tsaritsa, dear look here. One can't be reborn, I fear. Only God works wonders, see. Then the Tsar maid said, said she. If you have no fear of pain. You will soon be young again. Listen early in the morn. On the palace courtyard lawn. You must have three cauldrons ready. Two on fires burning steady. Now, the first one must be filled. To the brim, with water chilled. While the next with water hot. Have it boiled there on the spot. Then, with milk fill up the last. Heat it, till the milk boils fast. If you wish to marry me. Young and handsome wish to be. First you must your robes divest. Plunge into the milk, undressed. Next, in boiling water, then. In the water cold and when. You emerge believe me, you. Will be young and handsome too. All the Tsar did was to say. That his groom come straight away. Are you sending me once more? Cried Ivan, off to the shore. No, your majesty not if. I can help it I am still stiff. As it is no, I won't go. No, the Tsar said dash, no, no, no. Listen, now tomorrow morn. On the palace courtyard lawn. I will have three cauldrons filled. One will have cold water, chilled. In the second cauldron pot. There'll be water, boiling hot. While with milk I'll fill the last. Heating it till it boils fast. You, Ivan, must do your best. These three cauldrons you must test. First bathe in the milk, my son. Then the waters, one by one. Listen to his blarney, said. Vonya, and he shook his head. Chickens, pigs, and turkeys yes. People schooled them, I confess. I'm no pig or turkey, though. Nor a chicken, as you know. Now, a cold bath why that's quite. Difference rent and, I'll say, all right. As to being boiled alive. You can't tempt mid on tea you strive. But enough, your majesty. Don tea you make a fool of me. Wrathfully, the Tsar's beard shook. What me argue with you? Look. If my bidding be not done. With the rising of the sun. I will have you drawn and quartered. Tortured on the wheels and slaughtered. Off with you, you wretched plague, you. Shivering as with the ague. Vonya to the hayloft crept. Where his little humpback slept. Why, Ivanushka, so sad? Why so downcast, then, my lad? Has our bridegroom found another? Task for you, my little brother. Said his horse, Ivan, in tears. 
kissed his little horse's ears, held his neck in close embrace. As the tears rolled down his face, Woe is me, my horse, sobbed he. He will be the death of me. Now I've got to bathe, undressed. In three cauldrons, for a test. In the first, there's water, chilled. Next, with boiling waters filled. In the third milk, scathing hot. Yes, that is a task you've got. Said his horse. For this, you need. All my friendship, yes, indeed. Your misfortunes are the price. Of refusing my advice. Thank that evil feather for. All your woes and sorrows saw. But, God bless you do not cry. We will manage, you and I. I would sooner perish, than. Leave you in the lurch, Ivan. Listen, lad tomorrow morn. When you strip there on the lawn. Say, your gracious majesty. Please to send my horse to me. So that I can say goodbye. To my horse before I die. Now, I know he will agree. And he'll send a groom for me. I will wave my tail about. In each cauldron, dip my snout. Then I'll squirt upon you, twice. Whistle long and loudly thrice. You be sure to look alive. In the milk then quickly dive. Then in waters hot and cold. Dive, just as you have been told. Now, my lad, go, say your prayers. Sleep in peace, forget your cares. Dawn had scarce begun to peep. Humpback roused Ivan from sleep. Hey, my lad, stop snoring, do. Up. Your duty's calling you. So Vanusha scratched his head. Yawned, and scrambled out of bed. Crossed himself and said a prayer. Sauntered to the courtyard, where. Near the cauldrons, in a row. Sat the servants, high and low. Princes, dukes, and lords and pages. Cooks and coachmen, fools and sages. Sat and whispered with a smile. And discussed Ivan, the while. Logs were fed onto the fire. So that it should not expire. Then the portals opened wide. And the Tsar, with his young bride. Came to watch there, with the rest. How Ivan would stand the test. And the Tsar called out, Ivan. Now, undress yourself, my man. Dive, and bathe without delay. In those cauldrons there, I say. Vonya stripped no word said he. And the young Tsaritsa, she. Veiled herself right then and there. So as not to see him bare. To the cauldrons Vonya sped. Peered inside, and scratched his. Head. While the Tsar said, now, Ivan. Come on do your duty, man. Said Ivan, your majesty. Please to send my horse to me. So that I can say goodbye. To my horse, before I die. Pondering o'er this request. Graciously he acquiesced. And the Tsar was pleased to send. For Vanyusha's faithful friend. And Ivan then said adieu. To his humpbacked horse so true. Humpback waved his tail about. In each cauldron dipped his snout. Then he squirted on him twice. Whistled long and loudly thrice. Vonya gave his horse one look. Then a deep, long breath he took. After which, as he was told. In each cauldron dived, full bold. In and out he dived, and when. He emerged no words nor pen. Could describe him he was so. Handsome, I should have you know. Then he dried himself, and dressed. To the Tsar maid bowed his best. Glanced around with haughty air. No prince handsomer, you'd swear. What a wonder did you ever. Cried the crowd, and dash, well I never. Hastily the Tsar undressed. Twice and thrice he crossed his breast. Dived into the cauldron pot. 
and was boiled there on the spot. Here the Tsar maid stood up, and called for silence with her hand. Then, unveiling her fair face, thus addressed the populace. Listen, now. The Tsar is dead. Will you have me in his stead? Am I pleasing in your eyes? Speak. If so, then recognize. As the lord of all the land. My beloved husband and. Pointing to Ivan, she placed. Her fair arm around his waist. We are willing, all replied. We would die for you, they cried. For the sake of your sweet eyes. Tsar Ivan will recognize. Hand in hand, the royal pair. Tsar, and young Tsaritsa fair. To the holy altar sped. And in God's church they were Wednesday. Cannons from the castle flashed. Trumpets blared and cymbals crashed. From the cellars, then and there. Casks were rolled with vintage rare. And all night the drunken throng. Shouted out in merry song. Long lived Tsar Ivan, they cried. And the fair Tsar maid, his bride. In the palace, mirth held sway. Wines like water flowed that day. And before the groaning boards. Princes drank with dukes and lords. Twas a pleasure. I was there. Mead and wine I drank, I swear. Though my whiskers bathed in wine. Nothing passed these lips of mine. The end.